This meeting is called to order. Um, may I now have the reading of the meeting notice. The Board of Directors of the School District of the City of Erie, PA will meet in regular session on Wednesday, January 19th, 2022 in the auditorium at East Middle School, 1001 Athens Street at 6 o'clock p.m. by request of the President, Lori A. Pickens. Roll call. Ms. Cooley. Ms. Devlin. Present. Ms. Gillespie. Present. Mr. Harkins. Here. Mr. Nichols. Here. Ms. Sheridan. Here. Dr. Tate. Here. Mr. Brenneman. Present. Ms. Pickens. Here. We will now have the Pledge of Allegiance met, <clears throat> led by Michael Roman Garcia, fifth grade student at Deal Elementary School, introduced by Mr. Timothy Sable, principal, followed by a moment of silence for Linda Cassette, retired teacher who passed away on December 15th, 2021, Rita Shizmedia, reading learning resource assistant who passed away on December 19th, 2021, Joshua Ortiz, third grade student at McKinley Elementary School who passed away on December 21st, 2021, and Mark Leone, retired painter who passed away on January 11th, 2022. Good evening, Good evening everybody. It's uh, my pleasure to introduce Michael Roman Garcia, a fifth grader at Deal Elementary School. Michael's homeroom teacher is Ms. Parisa. He's here with his mom, Carla Garcia, and his dad, Joel Roman, and his brother, Omar. So when we do the pledge, we ask the kids a couple of these questions on these sheets, and I, I just wanna share some of Michael's answers because they were really priceless. Um, when I asked Michael, what does he enjoy about school? He says, well, I have friends at school, the teachers are nice, and they give you second chances. And we have specials every day, and that's cool. What were your favorite subjects, I asked? Math, social studies, writing, and reading. So I guess that's all of them. For Michael's personal interests, he includes video games, art, and playing board games with his brothers. In plans for the future, Michael would like to be an athlete, or an artist, or a teacher. Now at Deal, we uh, don't just kind of pick randomly. The, uh, the pledge leader, we actually have a contest, and we have kids uh, who are interested participate by submitting uh, a writing. And so I'd like to read Michael's submission, the winning submission. My name is Michael Roman Garcia. I am 10 years old, and I enjoy being with my friends and family. I would like to be the pledge leader. I have always wanted to do this. I want to be the pledge leader because I am very brave. I am comfortable speaking in front of the class and the school. I am responsible for completing my work and time on Amplify and iReady. I answer questions in class and help others if needed. I want to be a pledge leader because I am very involved in our school. I am a safety patrol. I participate in intramurals and am part of the anchor program. I have received many Principal 100 tickets for my time on Amplify and iReady. I do my best to be respectful, responsible, and safe. That is why you should pick me to be pledge leader. Well, Michael, you're picked. You're on. Michael. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great job, Michael. Next, we will have the recognition of school directors and observation of January for school director recognition month. Thank you, Ms. Pickens. As school, as school director recognition month comes to a close, I wanna say thank you to the nine more board members that are sitting up here with me tonight. You have dedicated your time, your talents, and your efforts to what is perhaps the community's most vital job, educating our students and supporting their families. If everyone would please uh, join me in thanking our school board for their service. That's it. 
I would like to announce that the board of, that the board met in an executive session on Wednesday, January 12, 2022, in the conference room one at the Dick James E. Barker Leadership Center, 148 West 21st Street, from 8:08 p.m. to 8:41 p.m. regarding negotiations and personnel matters. And this evening, Wednesday, January 19, 2022, in the library at East Middle School, 1001 Atkins Street from 5.25 p.m. to 5.45 p.m. regarding legal and personnel matters. We will now move on to item number two on the report of the superintendent. May I have a motion? No. The report of the superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Pickens. Uh, first, I would like to make sure that all of our families are aware that all households can now receive four individual rapid antigen COVID-19 tests through the federal government. The tests are free and will be shipped to home addresses, a limit of one order per address being later this month. To sign up, visit special.usps.com backslash test kits. Second, following our weather-related flexible instruction day at the first one of the year on Tuesday, I want to re reiterate that the district makes use of these days when regular attendance at school is not possible, primarily due to inclement weather. On flexible instruction days, students will participate in remote instruction, so please remind your children to bring their Chromebooks home every day after school. Complete information about the flexible instruction days can be found in the Family Information Guide on our website. Also a reminder to all of our families that this Monday, January 24th is a non-attendance day for all EPS students. And finally, I want to formally and very proudly recognize Lincoln Elementary, which received this certificate, naming them a National Blue Ribbon School. Lincoln was honored in 2020 as an exemplary achievement gap closing school, recognize, recognizing it as among the Pennsylvania's highest performing schools and closing achievement gaps. Lincoln is truly an example of our mission in action and we could not be more proud. Congratulations, Lincoln Lions. Now I'd like Mr. Nixon to come up to present this month's Stair Climber Awards. Thank you, Mr. Polito. Our monthly stick to Stair Climber Award is focusing on students from every one of our 17 buildings that have made improvements in their attendance, their behavior, and their classroom performance. I'd like to acknowledge, uh, we have Ms. Lanick helping today, uh, assistant principal from Piper Burley, so if we can give her a round of applause, I appreciate it. Um, again, we had another great meet and greet uh, at around 520-ish, 5.15, 5.20 today uh, over in the, the music room. Fantastic. Just getting to talk to some of the families. So I just would like uh, all, everybody just acknowledge our, our families that were here for this evening. Okay, so... Uh, I went over a little bit of this with uh, the families in the room, but just a quick housekeeping. So um, students, as I call your name, um, you'll just come down. I'll meet you with a fist bump, and then you can walk over to Miss Lanick, where she has our stair climber plaques, which I would like to note that um, the students, the pre-engineering lab at Erie High, um, they made the plaques blue uh, in recognition of the theme of the district, which is the stair climber, which is blue if you look on our website. So I just thought that was a... Pretty cool point and wanted to note that. So big shout out to Ms. Mikowski, Mr. Biter, and all those students that help with that on a monthly basis. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we did have some uh, call-ins uh, of, of people not coming in today um, just due to si uh, certain situations. So I will still say their name, read the reason why the school nominated them as a stair climber, and acknowledge them at this, at this ceremony today. So we'll start off. From the DePaulo Student Success Center, 12th grader, PJD, Patrick J. DePaulo, would like to nominate Natasia Mickle for the Stick to Stair Climber Award. 
Tay started her educational journey at PJD in 2018. She was in the first class of the RAMS program, Recovery Academy Middle School. To qualify for RAMS, students have to have failed all course classes. Tay is a great example of why Erie's Public Schools offers non-traditional educational opportunities. In 2018, she made up her eighth grade year and earned 5.5 credits as a ninth grader. Tay attends our cyber lab every day. She provides for herself and works hard to recoup her credits and now only has one course left to graduate. She is always positive and encourages others in the lab to work hard. It is with great pleasure that we nominate her. In fact, by the time you are reading this, she may have completed her last course. We are so very proud of her. Natasia Mickle. From Eagle's Nest, eighth grader, Delea has really begun to come out of her shell. She is an active participant in classroom discussions and has shown huge growth in her math class. Delea has fought through obstacles and has become a star student. She is a pleasure to have in class. Ladies and gentlemen, eighth grader from Eagle's Nest, Delea McCullum. From Erie High, ninth grader. Nasir had a slow start to the school year, but has turned it around and doing well with his attendance, his behavior, and grades. Nasir is a great Erie High student. Nasir Smith. And those first two, I've known both of them since they were younger, so it's awesome to see them just, just coming to themselves and doing great things. Um, from Collegiate Academy, 10th grader, Anjali is a wonderful student. She goes above and beyond to be an exemplary collegiate student. Anjali assists students with special needs without prompting. She is involved in grace notes and theater. She is kind, friendly, and a hard worker. Ladies and gentlemen, Anjali Selvam. From East Middle School, seventh grader. Jalissa has made improvements in grades, behavior, and attendance. Jalissa has made a huge effort to spend more time in class and less time in the office by nearly eliminating the number of behavior referrals in the month of December. Jalissa was only tardy to class twice, working hard each day to ensure that she is in class. Jalissa is now passing every one of her classes except one which she is working on. This has been a tremendous improvement from quarter one. Jalissa has shown her warrior power and often has positive interactions with staff and peers in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, Jalissa Warren. <laughs> from Strong Vincent Middle School, seventh grader. A wise person once said, success doesn't come from what you do occasionally, it comes from what you do consistently. Uja Ray, without a doubt, is our most consistent student on his seventh grade team. Reliable, tenacious, and hardworking, Uja Ray represents the very best of Strong Vincent. With courage, he conquers. Uja Ray. <laughs> From Wilson Middle School, seventh grader. Miley has done an outstanding job academically and socially. She performs so well that academically, excuse me, she has moved into honors, the honors section. She also has a great personality and is always willing to help others. Miley Fitch. <laughs> From Grover Cleveland, fourth grader. Russell's behavior and academic performance have improved greatly this year. Russell maintains a calm demeanor in all situations and practices tremendous self-control. He has great classroom participation, completes his homework, 
uses good manners, and follows his teacher's directions. We are so proud of him. Ladies and gentlemen, Russell Ellis Jr., also known as Junie. From uh, Joanna Connell, second grader. Natalie Gonzalez is a kind, sweet, caring, hard worker in second grade. She has good attendance, shows great behavior, and has shown improvement in all subject areas. It's a joy to have her in class. She embodies what it means to be a Connell Cougar. She is respectful, responsible, and safe. Ladies and gentlemen, Natalie Gonzalez. from Deal, first grader. Fabrice is always working hard to improve himself. He comes to school every day with a positive attitude and is always eager to learn. He demonstrates a work ethic that perseveres when it gets difficult and he stays humble with successes. Fabrice has shown a lot of progress this school year in his reading and math skills. In reading, he is beginning to read words independently. He is very proud of himself and his success. His determination shows in his academic improvements and in his positive attitude. He helps our class become a tighter team community. He is every classmate's biggest supporter and cheers on everyone around him. Way to go, Fabrice. You make Deal proud. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Fabrice Kariyunga. Kayuranga. I wanted to make sure I said that. Okay. Uh, from Edison, fourth grader, Jeremiah is an amazing worker who comes to school every day. He has changed his pattern of behavior, and that is noticed and appreciated. He is a good friend and a hard worker. We are so happy to honor Jeremiah for his dedication to being the best possible version of himself. Fourth grader, Jeremiah Stepp. from her, fourth grader from Harding Elementary. Malaya has been an outstanding student from the first day of school. She is focused, safe, responsible, and respectful every single day. Malaya came to fourth grade well prepared, yet is eager to learn more and be successful. Fourth grader, Malaya Hooks. <laughs> Second grader from Jefferson, Colazio has worked so hard this year. Thank you, Mom, for allowing me to practice that name. He follows, classroom, he follows classroom and school rules. He loves to learn new things and is so proud of himself when he masters new skills. He loves math, especially addition. He is a great helper in the classroom. Colazio has learned so many new things. I am so proud of him and his determination. So ladies and gentlemen, second grader Rico Colazio Burns. <laughs> Second grader from Lincoln. Uh, despite life events, Chase has gone through, he has, he has shown great resilience. Chase shows up to school every day with high spirits and willingness to learn. Chase loves coming to school and has a great attitude. Chase has also made leaps and bounds with his behavior and educational journey. So ladies and gentlemen, second grader from Lincoln Elementary, Chase West. Third grader from McKinley Elementary. Sincere has made great progress in both math and in language arts. He is also a great leader in the classroom. We are proud of him for continuing to challenge himself to do his best. Ladies and gentlemen, Sincere Dixon. Ele from Perry Elementary, first grader. Odie, also known as Odysseus Juan, has made tremendous improvements in his behavior this year. He attends school every day and enjoys being with his classmates. He has worked hard to follow directions and complete his work every day. Congratulations, Odie. Keep up the great work. Odysseus won.
first grader from Pfeiffer Burley. First grader Abdallah Al Asadi is Pfeiffer Burley's January stair climber. Abdallah struggled when coming to school at the start of the year. After working hard to overcome his fears and with the help of others, Abdallah now comes into the classroom with a positive attitude each day. He has started getting breakfast and greets others. He is much happier, and his classmates love seeing him come into the room. His confidence is growing more and more each day. Abdallah's courage has been excellent. Example for his peers and Piper Burley. Nice job, buddy. And Piper Burley Elementary couldn't be more proud to honor Abdallah. So, ladies and gentlemen, first grader Abdallah El Asadi. Say so, families, what we'll do is we'll have all the students, you guys can shift over into the middle in front of the board and our, our executive and superintendents. We'll take a large group photo. Yeah. After the photo, we can all head out to the lobby where we'll do individual school pictures, and then you're welcome to stay for the meeting or you're welcome to go home. Madam President, now that we're at this point in the superintendent's report, this is an ideal time for a board member to ask the superintendent to report on any given item that uh, is of concern to them, whether it's immediate or long range. I understand uh, one board member has a concern about an immediate problem. Now would be the time to do it, and if not, if there's a question of the superintendent to report on, he can be called upon to report back. Uh, either through written form or email between in a week or two or three or at the next regular meeting. So I'm just pointing out this is an ideal time to ask the superintendent to report to us on any given thing. And if he's unable to give us uh, a full report or a complete uh, comprehensive one, he can uh, take the time he needs to report back to us. But it's on the record that he's been asked. That's just my offering. Ms. Pickens, uh, thank you, Mr. Harkins. I think that was my prompt, so I appreciate the help there. Um, so we did discuss today that this would be an ideal time as a new board member. I struggle myself to know when that is. So um, Mr. Polito, I know um, I was contacted today by a number of concerned parents um, about the snow removal around the schools. I think some of my other um, board members were as well. And so um, I wondered if perhaps you or Mr. Brockman could give a brief kind of overview of the process of snow removal, maybe hear those concerns and tell us what's being done about them. Sure, it's, it's been a, obviously a difficult couple days with 18 inches of snow coming down. Um, we did have a few hiccups, but uh, our, uh, our supervisor, Mr. Paul Felak and Mr. Brockman have been working on it and I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Brockman to explain in more detail. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, I'll start with yesterday morning. So yesterday morning, uh, Mr. Felak drove around the entire district and started a, a general list of areas that the contractors did not get to or were not done uh, sufficiently to what we would expect from snow removal. Um, 
That list was given to the contractors about midday yesterday, and they have been working on it, albeit probably slower than many would like, but they have been working on that list of areas that need to be fixed. Uh, again, this morning, Mr. Felak drove around, updated the list, checked off what they got to, made notes on areas that still needed to be improved upon. Uh, he went around again at about 2.30 this afternoon. I actually drove around to many of our district buildings at about 4 p.m. this afternoon and made several notes, and everything was sent to the two contractors that we have uh, hired out for that snowplow removal. And uh, the expectation is, is that it's cleared up by tomorrow morning because in all reality, with the weather dropping, it's just gonna be that much more difficult on themselves to do it. Thanks, Mr. Brockman. If I could just ask a follow-up though, I hear that concern, but I'm wondering, is the snow being physically removed from the sites? Because what I was seeing was large banks that kids couldn't get over to get into the buildings. So I hear even if the sidewalk is cleared, can anything be done about that so students aren't climbing over those large banks? Yes, so when we've identified an area that does need to be removed, then we call the contractors because there is part of the overall contract that uh, the board had approved. So for instance, the corner of French Street and 26th, right by the edge of the stadium. Uh, there is a very large pile of snow that we'll be talking to the contractors about getting a, a, a bucket and a truck to remove. So that would just be one example. But yes, we, we definitely can do that. And we've been identifying those areas where the snow, instead of just being pushed, as you said, needs to be physically removed. Superintendent Polito, are there, is there anything else to your report that you have to share? That's all I have this evening. All right, can I get a motion to approve the superintendent's report? So moved. So moved by Brenneman. Second. Second by Daria. Thank you. We will now move on to any discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We will now move on to the hearing of city citizens. Board members, please be aware that during the hearing of citizens, we are not permitted to speak. Um, and for the citizens, please be notified that you have a three minute timer that will sound at the end of your time frame. When you come to the podium, please state your name and your zip code clearly. Um, are there any citizens here to speak tonight? Hello, board. It seems kind of odd to be on this side of the podium and not on that side after the last eight years. Hmm. Uh, but I uh, feel compelled to come and speak and in, in to uh, support the, the Erie High, I'm sorry, the East High, now East Middle School Warriors. Um, and this is actually a good sized crowd for here. Normally, after sitting here, once the stair climbers leave, so does everybody else except for a couple of administrators. So we certainly appreciate everybody who's here in support. Uh, I know there's a motion been made by, I believe, uh, a resolution made by Jay to have the Warriors uh, maybe retained, but the logo uh, replaced. Now, I know we spoke about this maybe two years ago when Tyler presented the same resolution, or at least we talked about it, and that, that failed because of the will of the board, and I'd like the will of the board, please, to consider uh, not opting for, for the change. Uh, a lot of people say, I guess the, as I understand it, it's uh, fuel or it's felt to be racist and certainly that's not the case. Uh, when you take a look at some of the, uh, I'm sure Jay has it all mapped out with literature supporting from some PhD or some other type of documents that he has, but there's equal amount of literature on the other side with certainly the American Indian population supporting the, uh, the continued recognition of the logos and the warriors and, and so forth. There, there's a, a woman named Sarah Pippinato who is a professor of Indian studies at University of Del or Denver. And, uh, and I could go on and on, but for the most part, the intent of the Erie, sorry, the East uh, Middle School now warriors is to honor our American Indian population. And that, that's certainly what we want to do. 
They feel that this is a way to continue to teach about the history of our Native American students. And more than anything else, and, and we're very fortunate to have a very diverse uh, student population. And this is their way of wanting to continue to have that the diversity and, and teach the, the diverse uh, cultural studies in, in America. And they're afraid that it, once all of these go away, that we're just going to forget about the Native Americans. And that's certainly not something that we want to do. Uh, they feel very proud that, that schools, whether it's uh, high school, grade school, middle school, what have you, that we, they want, we want to embrace the characteristics of what the American Indian uh, so represented. So we're very proud of that. Um, of course, there's a lot of other ones, whether it's the Celtics, it's the, the Vikings, the Fighting Irish, you know, we don't think about those. Um, but all of us, we, we need to really value our, our diverse uh, makeup and, and continue to honor those proud uh, segments of our society. So there's another gentleman, uh, Frank Lotier, who's the public relations director for the Saginaw Chippewas, and he, um, representing his, his population, says, hey, as long as it's not derogatory, something like Redskins, that's obviously derogatory. Uh, so please, I know I don't want to uh, stick any longer than I need to, but you know, this isn't a, 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 a way for Jay or anybody else to get a political splash in news and then create uh, unnecessary drama. Uh, no matter what we did for the last eight years, we had to think what's in the best interest of the students in our community as a whole, not some individual political move. That's what this seems like to, certainly to, to me. Just and to of us. Thank you, appreciate it. Have a wonderful Thank day. You. Bye -bye. Giving honor to God, good evening. Sheila Wolger, 16510. The city of Erie owes its own name to its ingenuous population. To change the name Erie Warriors would be promoting white supremacy. Erie Warriors is only racist to the posterity of those whose aim it was to cancel the culture, to erase the existence of a people who first inhabited this land in 1600. The stories vary by, by source but in the 1650s, the Erie, a Native American tribe, was led by their queen and a warrior chief named Ragnatha. There are no federally organized Indian tribe or Native American tribe in Pennsylvania today. Most Native Americans were forced to leave Pennsylvania during the 1700s, when Eastern tribes were being displaced by colonial expansion. Most tribes that once were native to Pennsylvania, some ended up on Indian plantations in Oklahoma, which is my home state. The Dawes Act passed in 1887 under President Grover Cleveland allowed the federal government to break up tribal land. It was a direct sequel to the Indian Appropriations Act. The Dawes Act further furthered the American government's interest in securing land owned by Native Americans and their assimilation to Euro-American culture. The Paxton Boys, and I will leave it to you to research the Paxton Boys and compare them to the Proud Boys today. Most importantly, after 1754, the mosaic of ethnic identities within Pennsylvania hardened into two separate and diametrically opposed racial categories, white and Indian. Europeans pursued policies, sounds familiar, that denied natives membership in the Pennsylvania Commonwealth. While natives trying to survive onslaught of colonization decided that their best option was to move beyond the reach of their European nation, of their European nation neighbors. When you don't know your history, you're apt to repeat it. My prayer is that you not be complacent or complicit regarding the change. It is not a mascot, it's Pennsylvania's history. And if you're really concerned about racism, change the name of Grover Cleveland School. The conversation should be changed, not to rid a nation of what they are due, but to bring the community together. And I pray that you will leave the name 
and make the conversation into changing the name of Gorbis Cleveland School. Thank you. Greetings. My name is Kaz Jarmolowitz. I'm a 1955 graduate of East High School. We were warriors then, we're warriors now. And we'll always be warriors. I've had three children that have graduated from East High. And I represent the class of 1955 because I meet with a lot of the uh, people I graduated with that are still with us. And I know I speak for the people that aren't with us anymore. We're very proud of the name East High Warriors. So please don't use some agenda of some kind to change that because a warrior is a warrior. It's not a racial term at all. Thank you very much. Mr. Mr. Jermazowitz, we need you to sign in, please. Um, I'm sorry. The Jarmolowitz, could you sign in, please? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Evan Everhart. Um, one of his classmates probably commissioned me to make uh, 16507, sorry, commissioned me to make this art piece in the lobby. And uh, pardon me, I'm very passionate about this. It was made out of some relics, uh, the handrails from that they would likely touch these alumnus, and they had this competition for several artists. I was selected because I had those pieces of junk that were from the old high school. To fast forward, it's just a piece, and as it's been stated, I'm grateful to, it seems like you know in this view that we should get on with the peacemaking, the prayer. Uh -huh. And not to be divisive or, divisive or just merely flip something off the wall doesn't change anything or change a name. This has to be done patiently with uh, all the efforts of every individual and nationwide and, and citywide. And it's nice to hear a lot of positive voices here tonight to reaffirm that. Classmates and such and um, blessed are the peacemakers. One six five zero eight. A maxim of law says that a creation can't be greater than its creator. And in this case, the school board can't be greater than the government, even if the government is a foreign corporation masking as our government. A school board cannot overrule a state and or federal ruling. The school board can't be and should not act like a bunch of hot shots making up their own rules. Instead, the way you're acting sho in shows that you're acting like a bunch of criminals. Boris Johnson, one of the most corrupt politicians there is and one of the most prolific pedophiles around, repealed almost all COVID measures. So you're saying to me that when you guys are keeping these mask mandates and all that stuff, that you're more corrupt than a man like Boris Johnson. Self-righteousness is a seductive suitor, one of which most of the people on this board have not said no to because it's obvious that your allegiance is not to the families of this school. Instead, it's with the evil global cabal. 
Speaking of which, last time I was here, I answered a question about how you're protecting our children from child trafficking, given that Erie is in the top three cities in the entire country for child trafficking. I want a list of all kids in the district, including the illegal immigrant children, because I know there are plenty in the district. I also know that illegals are brought into the school district in two ways. Human services, like um, the foster care system, and the superintendent. I want to know how are these children kept track of as they come and go. I bet they aren't, so I want to know how, does, how will anybody know when these children go missing, just like those kids that were at Erie first. They went missing after how many days in this city. I also want to know how are the real students in this district kept track of if they don't show up for Zoom. Does somebody go out to every house to check on these children because a phone call is not going to suffice? How do you know it's someone who's there who's not really them, their parent, or how do you know it's actually the student? I know there's kids very recently in more affluent districts that have been sold for drugs because their parents are not short of money, but they did it because that's what's happening. Um, I want to, people know who I'm talking to up there. I'm not going to name names. I'm tired of being ignored on emails, and I will not answer your calls on social media because that is the wrong way to try to talk. Do it the right way. All I can say to you, everyone up there is I have my most sincere prayers for you guys because only God can help you, only the ones who you know who you are involved in what you are. There was a very re on the 15th, there was an international common law court that just indicted 75 people, including the CEOs of Pfizer and Glaxo for crimes against humanity related to COVID and the vaccine and child trafficking, and they're all getting life imprisonment without a parole. So if you think, do you think that if they got indicted that you won't be spared? Don't think so. I don't see the pen. Oh, it's a pencil. Mm -hmm. Joseph Courier, 16503. Right here on the east side of town, we have our village that the kids go to the elementary schools, and it's brave of them, and they become braves. Then they move on to the middle schools, a limited number of schools, and they become warriors to move on to Erie High School and respect and become royal and royally in, endeared to the rest of the country. So we're not, it really, it's not a racist name. They are braves. They are warriors. They become royals and they move on. They, the Native Americans love the school systems, trusted the government with uh, like the Choctaw Academy at Great Crossings in Kentucky and found out that the government wasn't treating them right, requested their monies be sent directly to them, opened their own schools until they were moved off their lands and eventually out of mainstream America, which is horrible. But we will always be East High Warriors. I'm a warrior for life, the name will live on. And that's all I gotta say about that. Thank you. Where's the pen? Come on, you guys. You're cheap. Beverly Potts, 605 Elm Court, 16503. I am and was, in 1990, became president of the Alumni Association of East High School and put a lot of time at East High School. Served 11 years as a PTA president. Served 11 years working in the stadium to bring monies in for the various organizations for the kids to spend. And I can't talk with a mask on. So I will just uh, tell you what I think. Let me tell you that uh, I first want to know about discrimination because who are we discriminating against? Uh, let's clarify this a little bit. Can we clarify and find out who? 
What needs replaced? The name? The warrior or the actual mascot? The Native American Indian. You ought to see my notes. You'd love them. In my mind, they're both one and the same. The warrior and the Indian is one and the same. Are you singling out each tie as we have been in the past? Maybe we need to open up other schools in this city and take a look for their names and maybe their mascots and let them say that that will be opening a can of worms. You must realize this will process, will not just take overnight. It's going to take a long time if we do this. Let's look at just a few. Let's look at uh, the president, US, United States President Woodrow Wilson. Let's look at that school. How about the inventor, Thomas Edison? That school is deplorable. Most recently, we have the Central, which is Erie High. What you don't know is that they are the royal, and is their mascot the crown? In England now, we have people that royalty and the crown, and the crown's kind of tipping off sideways. That's not such good news right now. Central used to be the centaurs, but they chose their colors as purple and gold. Think about that. Purple and gold. You know what that represents? That represents the cold crown. That's a liquor. The royal gold crown is a liquor. Upon hearing Jeff's Pinsky's, I don't know if you've all received Jeff's comment on his, and I agree with Jeff. I think we need to form a committee, put everybody together, and invite our brother the American Native Indian, and he is our brother. And it's you and I that was at fault that made him leave Erie. You and I. So Thank lastly, you, my friends, right now with COVID and so many other issues plaguing our country, the worry about mascots is not on the list. It's not on your list, I'm sorry. Try not to forget who you are, who was elected to serve. Try not to forget what your job is up there. Ms. You Potts. are Erie City School District Public Education. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Potts. Oh, he's signing it. Okay. Are there any other citizens who have anything they wish to say? That man that was just up here talking to you on the phone, uh, he talked to me on the phone about his, and he, and he said he had a lot of issues about that wire that he made on the on the wall out there. But he did he did you tell them, Evan? Did you tell him the story? Shared those. He told me that and I cried on the phone because that that warrior out there is a memorial to his wife. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Linda Burfield. 7273 Curtsy Drive, Fairview, Pennsylvania, 16415 at this time. I did graduate from East High School, the old school. Um, our sports team kept this school from allowing riots to occur during the Academy riots. 
we were consolidated. We were the East High School Warriors. We were proud. We didn't allow what was going on at Academy to take place. Not in this building, but in East High School. We did not allow it. That's not who we were. We were joined in a name, East High Warriors, gave us pride, gave us unity. You can't take that away. You may have, due to public funding from a couple decades ago, I've had to um, take the school and turn it into a middle school, much like Strong Vincent. However, you know, yeah, definition, warrior, a person who fights in battles and is known for having courage and skills, a proud and brave warrior. Many Americans suggest that Indian imagery and athletics honors indigenous peoples. In other words, such symbols were meant to promote notions of valor, bravery, strength, and appear authentic and dignified, and above all else, look positive. They do not register as racial symbols for most Americans desperate to live in a colorblind society, but rather reaffirm for them a sense of belonging, respect, and the naturalness of difference. Unfortunately, Native American mascots contribute to a dominant misreading of race and racism. These ill-intentioned actions of a few individuals are not related to their beliefs and behaviors. They are being twisted and purposely misconstrued to further their personal agendas due to the threat of their appearing not to be aware or sensitive enough to the culture of others. There are over 100 school sports teams with the Warriors name across America. Unfortunately, from what I have read, many of them are going through similar issues and being asked to change their name and logo image. In this small town of Erie, Pennsylvania, we're not alone in this twisted, politically motivated need to appear sensitive and non-racist. The sad fact is there's nothing insensitive or racist about the name or the logo slash image which is being made an issue of by the Erie School District Council with their smokescreen of concern. We need funding, properly utilized state grants and focus on the disaster, which is the city of Erie School District. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, my name is Karen Jarmolowitz Spagel, proud graduate of 1984 East High School. I am on our alumni committee for our class, as so are many of my fellow classmates. Every five years we get together, we talk about old times or proud moments in East High, whether it's academic sports, getting to know everybody again, learning about grandchildren now. This was four years of our proudest time being an East High Warrior. We grew up in these neighborhoods. We grew up with all our friends, playing, riding our bikes. This is a great neighborhood and a great school. 
when they tore down the old school, it was very sad. We understand what the reasons were, and they rebuilt this beautiful school. We bought bricks that line these walls, showing how proud we are to be warriors. I have graduated, and I still have friends from this school. My dad spoke earlier. My brother, 1979. My sister, 1982. Never once have I heard from anyone a disparaging remark about the warrior name or symbol. No one has ever said throughout my years, previous years, any other classmates have ever, never said anything about someone was embarrassed or that the warrior symbol or name is race, racist. There's a lot of issues going on in our world today, and I hope that we don't bow down to a very select few. When Mr. Brenneman said, <clears throat> excuse me, that there are citizens that came to him with these issues, I would just like to know how many citizens is this really bothering? Um, Good point. Are they from our neighborhood? We have roots here in this school. I grew up on 7th and Ash, and I'm proud to say, and will always say, I'm an East High Warrior. Thank you. Excuse me, but I can't tap with a mask on either. My name is Howard Cleansing. I am an East High graduate, the old East High School, 1968. I was appalled when I heard that they are trying to change the name of the mascot or do away with the East High logo. I wear this sweatshirt, very proud. I'm an East High warrior. I will die at East High Warrior with this logo. I bleed scarlet and gray. Thank you. Right, can't see. Good evening. My name is Nadine Shannon. I'm a graduate of East High class of 1972. This year we will be selling, celebrating our 50th year reunion. We have, had, we have had a reunion every five years since we graduated in 1972. We are proud of our school. We are proud to wear this Indian on our shirt. We grew up with this. Everything involved around a warrior and the Indian, whether it would be any type that they made for us, a logo, whatever it was, it was the East High Warrior Indian. I am so grateful to see so many people here tonight representing us. And if you notice, most of these people are older people. We don't have any young people here to support us because our heart is East High, East High Warrior. Another thing, when they tore the school down in where the track is now, we went over there and we physically got bricks from the school to give to our classmates. Everybody got a brick at that year's class reunion. 
we were so proud to give those bricks out because that was a piece of us. We went to school every day. We loved that school. It wasn't the best school. It was falling apart, but we loved East High School. When they decided to build this new school, that was fine and good. We knew that we needed a new school. This became the new East High School. And then the school district turned around and they made this a middle school. So they brought Wayne over here. Wayne are the generals. They are not the East High Warriors. So if anything should have been done, it should have been done now. You should have retired the Warriors and the Indians at that time. We love our school. This school is now basically Wayne Middle School. It is not East, High, East Middle School. So they should, if, you want to, if you're going to do this, we'll probably have no say in this. It's going to be up to you, but we'll always be East High Warriors. We will always wear this Indian. And Erie, Pennsylvania comes from the Erie's tribe of Indians who fought the Iroquois and they lost. And this is where the name from Erie, Pennsylvania comes from, from the lake and the Erie's Indians. So why don't we just change our city's name too? Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah Holesco Everhart. My husband spoke earlier. He created the warrior artwork that was commissioned in, several years ago by an alumnus for his wife. I agree that Erie is a beautiful place, and Erie is a place of Native people that we must continue to honor. And as long as we continue to honor the Native people and to know their history and know where Americans have gone wrong, we should continue to use the symbol. I also am a, I grew up in Erie on Six and Summerheim, and now I live on Six and Raspberry. And although I didn't go to the city schools, I think they're beautiful. And as long as we use a symbol in a beautiful way, not in a negative manner, we should continue to use it. I also grew up in a hockey family and I'm a big fan of the movie Miracle. And one of the, my favorite phrases from the movie is that the name on the front is a lot more important than the name on the back. So as long as we use that symbol in a positive manner and not for our own reasons, it should be okay. Thanks. Evening, one six five zero three. It's Mackenzie Markle, zip code one six five zero three. Would like to say something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hello. I'm a student, seventh grade this year at East Middle School, and sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> Um, as a student this year in seventh grade, I have had many generations passed down from my mother, my father, and grandparents, and so on, that have been East High Warriors. And it is very important to me that we keep the name to honor those people that have graduated, have passed away, East Warriors, and to keep the name to be and keep. <laughs> and keep our community proud to be the East High Warriors, even East Middle School Warriors. Thank you. Are there any more citizens who would like to come forward? Uh, 
Um, I do want to say thank you all for showing up and for speaking. Um, we do not take it lightly, and it will uh, continue to carry forward in the decisions and whatever this whole process looks like going forward. So I do want to tell you all thank you for showing up. Thank you for speaking out um, on this matter. Um, moving on to item number four on reports of committees and liaisons. Are there any reports from any committees and liaisons? Madam President. Yes, ma'am. Um, I do want to say thank you to the, the board in the Erie City School District for on October 23rd, I attended the Pennsylvania State Board Association Conference by Zoom. Um, it was a very interesting meeting that dealt with policy and procedures that will be mailed out to the districts across Pennsylvania. Legislative priority issues for 2021-2022 was to enact meaningful charter school reforms, provide significant, significant continued financial investments for school districts, address the Pennsylvania pension funding crisis, and provide for the safety and mental health needs of students. Secondly, I do want to say as a representative for the ID5, information was sent to all board members and administrators concerning um, a weekly update. So that should be in their email. That's all I have to report. Thank you, Ms. Cooley. Can I get a motion to approve the reports of committees and liaisons? Madam President, I had a report as well. Yes. Thank you. Um, as a community liaison uh, appointed by you, I just had two items to share out. Um, I was contacted that the girls basketball Erie High Royals are holding a senior and alumni night. They actually would like to invite all alumni women basketball players from all of our schools, relevant even to our conversation tonight. Schools that have closed, schools that are still open, that will be on February 10th. There will be information on that on Facebook. Um, also was contacted by the Bar Association that there is a student contest available for students in all grades at various levels. Um, the contest is around drawing and essays related to liberty. Um, that contest can be found on the Erie Bar website, eriebar.com. I believe that the deadline on that is April 25th. Um, be great to have some of our students submit for that as well. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other reports? No. Can I get a motion to approve the reports of committees and liaisons? So moved. So moved by Burnaman. Second. Seconded by Devlin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any discussion? Thank you. Moving on to item five, unfinished business. Um, we have no unfinished business, so we will continue to move forward to item six. Madam um, President? Yes. I move we adopt the new business, which is all items with the numeral six in front of them, and only that. The new business of the school district. Does anyone want to second that? I'll second it. I move by Harkin, seconded by Sheridan. Any discussion? Roll call. Ms. Cooley? Yes. Ms. Devlin? Yes. Ms. Gillespie? Yes. Mr. Harkins? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Sheridan? Yes. Dr. Tate? Yes. Mr. Brenneman? Yes. Ms. Pickens? Yes. Moving on to item seven, supplemental new vi business. Um, we have four items under the supplemental new business. Is that correct? Madam President, each one of those items was separated and they will be handled individually under item eight of the agenda. Oh, got it, okay. So we will move to item eight for the separations. I would suggest we have an inclusive motion to approve them all and then separately discuss them and vote on them rather than have a motion and Second with each one. If that's acceptable, I would move Mr. To Walker. approve all of these. We would prefer individual motions if possible. Okay. Whatever you I'm striving for efficiency, that's all. So item eight point one. Um, that is the adoption of board rules and amendment. 
Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved by Brenneman. Second. Seconded by Harkins. Roll call. A discussion, Madam President. Discussion. Oh, discussion. Uh, Madam President. Yes. Um, I want to, uh, you know, this is part of the process, uh, you know, I think on an annual basis to review the board rules. Um, it was probably the first thing I did when, uh, uh, you know, having only been in office, you know, coming right in. It's kind of like, it's kind of something to throw at new board members right as soon as you're coming in. Like, here's the board <laughs> rules. This is your chance to make changes to it. But uh, I appreciate uh, you appointing me to the uh, policy board review committee. Um, and uh, I think that'll be a great place to uh, have a consistent, regular uh, review of, of our policies throughout. Um, and this one wasn't a big one. It was one that just uh, uh, uses gender expansive languages in the rules. Um, so there isn't anything fundamentally changed to the uh, rules themselves, although that's maybe something we may want to consider uh, in committee later on down the road. And that's all I have, uh, Madam President. Thank you. Any other board member have anything to discuss? Roll call. Oh, Madam President. Yes. Um, the reason why I separated it out for a vote is that the binary terms I don't agree with, taking he and she out, adding there, them, there, I, I can't agree with it. So that's why I separated it for the vote because I do not agree with the changes in the terminology. Thank you, Sheridan. Madam President. Yes. I had asked for a separate vote due to um, the Native American mascot at East Middle School. I felt that, that we need to have more input from the students and the Ms. community. Cooley, we're not on that. We're still on 8.1. Any other discussion on 8.1? No. Can we have a roll call on that? Ms. Cooley? Yes. Ms. Devlin? Yes. Ms. Gillespie? Yes. Mr. Harkins? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Sheridan? No. Dr. Tate? Yes. Mr. Brenneman? Yes. Ms. Pickens? Yes. Moving to item well, 8.2, resolution to encourage safe firearm storage to prevent injury and gun violence. Can I have a motion to approve? So, uh, so moved. So moved by Brenneman. Second by anyone? Second. Second by Tate. Any discussion? Um, Madam President. Yes. I did ask that the uh, resolution be read in its entirety. A resolution to encourage safe firearm storage to prevent injury and gun violence, whereas the Board of Directors believes we must take a multi-pronged approach to reducing the threat of violence on school grounds and in our community, particularly violence involving firearms, and whereas evidence strongly suggests that secure firearm storage is an essential component to any effective strategy to keep schools and students safe, and whereas an estimated five households with at least one loaded, unlocked firearm. <coughs> Excuse me. And whereas every year roughly 350 children under the age of 18 unintentionally shoot themselves or someone else, that's roughly one unintentional shooting per day, and 70% of these incidents take place inside a home. And whereas another 1,200 children and teens die by gun suicide each year, most often using guns belonging to a family member, and whereas an incidence of gun violence on school grounds, 75% of active shooters are current students or recent graduates, and up to 80% of shooters under the age of 18 obtain their guns from their own home, relatives' home, or from friends. And whereas research shows that secure firearm storage practices are associated with up to an 85% reduction in the risk of unintentional firearm injuries among children and teens. And whereas the United States Secret Service national threat Assessment Center recommends the importance of appropriate storage of weapons because many school attackers used firearms acquired from their homes. And whereas across the country, lawmakers, community members, and local leaders are working together to implement public awareness campaigns, such as the Be Smart program, which is endorsed by the National PTA, and which encourages secure, secure gun storage practices and highlights the public safety risks of unsecured guns. <coughs> And whereas school districts across the country have begun to proactively send materials home to parents 
and guardians informing them of applicable firearm storage laws and firearm secure storage best practices. And whereas keeping students, teachers, and staff safe from the threat of gun violence should be the responsibility of all adult stakeholders at each of our school sites. And whereas to continue with preventative measures to increase student and school safety, we must act now and now it is hereby resolved by the Board of School Directors of the School District of the City of Erie the following. Number one, the Board directs the Superintendent to include within the Annual Family Information Guide appropriate information explaining the importance of safe and secure gun storage to protect minors from accessing guns which would lead to accidental or intentional injury or death. And number two, the Board of the, and the Superintendent will continue to work with local law enforcement agencies, health agencies, student and family groups, community groups, and nonprofits to collaborate and increase efforts to inform district families about safe and secure storage of firearms in their homes. Can I have a motion to approve item 8.2? So moved. So moved. It's already taken. Discussion. Oh. Madam President, we already have a motion and a second. All right, second. Discussion. 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 <coughs> No discussion? Okay. Roll call. Ms. Cooley? The wording would be to encourage. Yes. Ms. Devlin? Yes. Ms. Gillespie? Yes. Mr. Harkins? No. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Sheridan? No. Dr. Tate? Yes. Mr. Brenneman? Yes. Ms. Pickens? Yes. Moving to item 8.3, resolution to retire the use of the Native American mascot at East Middle School. So moved. Second. Moved by Brenneman, seconded by Tate. Discussion? Madam President? Yes. Uh, I just want to um, thank all those who uh, came and spoke today. Uh, I understand that uh, you know history and attachment, especially in our formative years, is important. And the the goal here is not to take away those cherished memories uh, and those attachments and learn experiences. I do want to um, say a few things about. And, and I apologize. How much time do I have here? Five minutes. Okay, I'm going to use all five. Um, so, in reading the National Congress of American Indian on their multiple reports and and 50 years of action to uh, retire mascots across the country. Uh, at the very front of the report was a quote by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, who we just celebrated two days ago, who said, our nation was born in genocide when it embraced the doctrine that the original American, the Indian, was an inferior race. Even before there were a large number of Negroes on our shores, the scar of racial hatred and already disfigured colonial society from the 16th century forward, blood flowed in battles of racial supremacy. We are perhaps the only nation which tried as a matter of national policy to wipe out its indigenous population. Moreover, we elevated the tragic, that tragic experience into a noble crusade. Indeed, even today we have not permitted ourselves to reject or to feel remorse for this shameful episode. Our literature, our films, our drama, our folklore, all exalt it. According to the Jim Crow Museum, Native American mascots have very little to do with Native Americans. They do not and cannot represent indigenous men and women, much like blackface, such inventions and imaginings meant to represent a racial other, tell us much more about Euro-Americans. They reflect and reinforce the fundamental features of racial and gendered privilege in a settler society, particularly a sense of entitlement to take and remake without consent and to do so without the burden of history, the challenges of knowing, or the risk of penalty. A popular version of playing Indian arose in the early part of the 20th century, early 1900s, in organized sports with team names such as Braves, Chiefs, Indians, Savages, Redskins, and Warriors. These monikers, evoking masculine ideals of bravery and aggression, became widespread at a range of institutions, including K-12 schools, colleges, universities, and amateur and professional athletic leagues and franchises. In reference to the National People Not Mascot Campaign, not Mascots Campaign, this is a campaign that has grown and expanded during the pandemic. Nikki Piter of the Center for Native American Youth stated, Native, Ameri Native youth are resilient and worthy of a future where society sees them for who they are beyond caricatures and stereotypes that are a result of race-based mascots. 
Cynthia Connolly of the Lake Erie Native American Council, an organization calling for all K-12 schools to end the use of race-based mascots, wants to be talked about as a modern living people, saying, we're almost always pushed in the historical past, and it makes it very difficult for people to view us as a modern people and empathize with our modern issues when they only view us as feathered and leathered from the 1800s. And I apologize, I think I, I did intend to ask for the resolution to be read in, in its entirety, but I don't know procedure-wise if that's relevant at this point. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam President. Ms. Cousy. Yeah. I'd ask for it to be separated because I want the opportunity to hear from the community. East High has been around since 1919, and I think we should hear from the community, the staff, the teachers, the alumni, which we have heard from some today, but we still need to hear from more regarding this. Um, and we really need to look at what it is we're talking about when we're talking about retired use of a Native American mascot. Um, I think we just really need more research on this, more discussion on this, and to look at the other issues which are uh, most definitely important to the district besides the Native American mascot. Thank you, Ms. Cooley. Um, I will also like to chime in and say that I will continue to stand as I stood last week and say that unless we, the, the starting of all of this should start with community input and students. Um, I will say that I also feel that if we're gonna tackle something like this at East, then just like one of the citizens spoke, there's a whole lot of schools that we need to circle in. So this needs to be a full circle endeavor and not just a one-time chime in. Um, so I do want to continue to you know, push forward that that will continue to be my stand, that we can't make this kind of change um, without first, or we shouldn't make this kind of change without first talking with the citizens, talking with the students, because again, they voted us up here to keep them involved, to keep them informed, and to make decisions with them and alongside them. Um, I am also a graduate of East High School. I attended the old East High School and was the first class to finish out of this new East High School in 2000. Um, so I continue, I can definitely feel the passion and the heart behind everyone who spoke um, as a warrior because it's just East has a family, it's just a tie that comes with this school and it still is here. Um, the students have a lot of feelings and I'm very grateful for the student who stood up and spoke tonight and we want to make sure that they all hear the thoughts and the plans and the intentions and that they bring their thoughts and their plans and that we be a board that's not um, trying to dictate but we do want to bring out the information. I appreciate a lot of information but I also know that we can do this uh, more collectively and when walk forward together in whatever this outcome will look like. Um, and so that's that's my thoughts. Madam President. I would just like to add, I appreciate those that came out to speak tonight. Um, we appreciate your, your passion. Uh, I was particularly touched by the gentleman who spoke about not being divisive. I like the idea of community conversation around this. Um, I think yesterday or today was the National Day of Racial Healing. We know we have a lot of issues in this country. I think we need to address them head on. I think we need to face them and sit together and talk about them. And I think this is an opportunity to do that. So. I am in favor of more conversation around this, hearing more than the few that came tonight, which I do appreciate, but on a, a more comprehensive scale, um, I would like to see more conversation before, before I can make a decision. Any other discussion? Madam Chairman. Yes. Madam President. Mr. Harkin. Uh, I'm concerned that um, To move forward on this, we need to uh, get a response from East. And East has components. They have alumni, they have parents, students, and uh, I think we should get a response from, from these parties. And uh, the issue is how do, we, how do we obtain that? In other words, is this something we would refer to the PTA or the boosters, or, or to everybody. I think it's a good idea to get 
a full read from, from the East constituency, and uh, I'm just not quite sure how we would do that. Um, we did, I did mention that to Brian at the last meeting, so I'm pretty sure that they will be able to orchestrate what creating some kind of committee and forums look like, just as they did with Erie High and all the things that rolled out, correct? Yes. So that would, that would be how the, that platform will go. Yes. This last week has brought a lot of focus onto this, and uh, I, I, we were all forced to get, take a hard look at it, and I still don't acknowledge that there's a problem here to solve or at least uh, devote our energies to as an administration. And uh, with all the, all the problems we have during the pandemic, that lady who mentioned unfair funding that is our big problem and has been for 30 years and racism is woven all through that problem. And we've been, made great strides in solving that problem and with uh, our current superintendent and the prior one, we, we made great strides. And it took a lot of work and a lot of energy and we had to close buildings and, and we had no choice and that was hard. We took things from the community. We took uh, buildings and uh, neighborhood uh, attachments from people because we had no choice. This would be a choice and I don't think we are, I don't see the urgency to make that choice and I don't want to commit the energies of the district that it would take. Brian would do it right and the, the many meetings and the attention diverted away from instruction during the pandemic and all of that, I just don't see it as worth it. Uh, There's an emotional trauma on the alumni, generations that went through here, and the staff that uh, worked here. There's more trauma on them, as I see it, than uh, solve any trauma that can be solved that's alleged for Native American people. I just, I don't hear it or see it. So it's traumatizing to people who have grown up loving and uh, rallying around that. And uh, when I think of the great East High personalities that rallied themselves and the community around it. Viola Andrews was a friend of mine. The great coaches, Jim Hyde, Duke Detzel, Bill Brabender, Carney Metzger, Pat Hart. School board members, Jim Herzig and Tom Spagel, who had a special fondness and protectiveness to East and its image and its successes. Uh, all of those people ought not to be made feel that they were supporting a racist uh, symbol. I just don't agree that they were. So I just don't think we ought to divert our attention and our energies in another direction, especially during the pandemic, because it's a remarkable what we have accomplished and we're still not out from under financial watch. And uh, we have the ever-changing challenges to instruction of the pandemic. And I just think that's where our uh, emphasis ought to remain. And so for that reason, I just don't support this. Thank you, Mr. Harkins. Any further discussion? Madam Not President. Oh, sorry. thank you. Um, I just wanted to say uh, I can empathize with all of the voices who spoke tonight um, and folks who have reached out to um, my personal email address and shared um, their thoughts and, and views on this. And I just want to underscore um, the you know resolution isn't to remove the warriors. So you know people spoke about being proud warriors, and I think that is something that you know, can be a historic remembrance, but it's also something that can carry forward. And I think this resolution, um, you know, the way it's crafted, uh, it's specifically removing the Native American imagery um, associated with it, gives us an opportunity to move forward in a way that honors and respects um, folks of all, all backgrounds and gives us a chance as a district to move forward in a way that I think we all can appreciate of uh, you know the opportunities that are presented to us um, as being a district that uh, focuses on um, you know equity and it's embedded in all forms and systems uh, in which we're moving forward. Uh, so I just wanted to to share that. I, I appreciate and hear you all um, and empathize greatly with the emotional connection that you all um, are sharing. Um, but I think it's you know a great opportunity to think about the future and what that looks like for our district. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Sheridan? 
Thank you, Madam President. Um, just a couple things. I want to thank all the East High people for coming out. I'm sure there would have been more. Uh, I taught at East High um, my first couple years, and I had it was the greatest joy I had. The camaraderie, the people, the PTA, um, and I feel deep down inside that we're using this pandemic to move a political message. And the message of changing your warrior was brought up in July by one of our board members who's no longer with us. And he was voted down then. And I'm gonna vote down this amendment tonight. I think during this time, we should be looking at our children, the students that are four months behind in math, three months behind in reading, or you could tiptoe around that, their test scores. We're trying to acclimate the students back into school. They have not been in a school, they've been on Zoom. So they're coming back and having to learn social graces again, how to behave, uh, follow rules and regulations. And I, you know, we can say we can open this up to people, but we're still in a pandemic so people will be afraid to come out and speak. And also I think people will be afraid to come out and speak because of the political undertones of this. So I'm voting no, all way. It should stay the warrior and the Indian. Thank you. Madam thank President. You, yes. I wanna thank the community for coming out and speaking tonight. Um, I wanna thank Mr. Brenneman for doing the research that I feel like needed to be done. Um, I feel like change is hard for this community. It can be hard. A lot of people spoke about the closing of the schools. I think that we as a community can come together and say what needs to be done. I'm in favor of retiring the mascot because I feel like it's time. That's my opinion. Thank you, Ms. Schools. Madam Chair. Yes. I'm allowed a second time as long as I don't go over 10 minutes. I think it's important to note again that the name, this name, warrior name, just as the city of Erie's name was taken to acknowledge, was chosen to acknowledge and remain connected to our roots. And in the case of the school, for the young people to grow up and learn and have their attention drawn to the fact that there were other peoples here before we were and that they were noble in character. and. Surrounding districts have done the same. When Lawrence Park and Wesleyville merged and Lawrence Park High School closed in the late 60s, they chose the Iroquois and the Braves as their school name and mascot. The Wattsburg School District named its high school after the Seneca Nation. Uh, it's an attempt to honor and acknowledge, not to point out uh, a conquest. So I think it's uh, worth re-acknowledging and reconnecting and remaining connected with our roots. I can't think of a better one. Any other discussion? Uh, yeah, Madam President, um, I just want to point out that uh, indigenous people, Native Americans, young people, people who have been in this battle for more than 50 years, uh, have the, the, their mission to uh, end the use of, their, of, a, of somebody who wasn't even them, because this uh, image that was downloaded from the internet from Shutterstock and edited, uh, which has no relation or connection by, it was made by somebody in New Zealand, it has no connection to the Erie people. Um, and indigenous tribes from our region is saying, please stop using these mascots. Um, and that, uh, so this, during the pandemic, the issue of racism of this very vulnerable population uh, has become an issue that they want dealt with now, and it's been an issue they've been want dealt for 50 years. Uh, in addition to that, the, um, uh, the, it is a matter of racism, and, and, and racism is not something that we should put on uh, 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 you know, the back burner to deal with later, because as research has shown, as indigenous people are telling us near unanimously that, that this has an impact on the mental health and the academic performance of indigenous students, and it has a direct impact on all students on how they view uh, indigenous people. So I just want to, um, realizing that uh, people in, in discussion, you know, it is tough because again, 
there's this melding and meshing of, of history, of, of lived experiences with this symbol that does not represent and is, it is a, a mascot that is harmful in its image, um, recognizing that uh, those want more discussions around that and noted that we had changed the, I had, you know, made changes to the resolution because of this conversation, specifically point uh, seven, where the board of directors uh, further directs the administration to engage in a series of public discussions regarding the appropriateness of mascots and building names with the expectation that the administration report December 2023 Committee of the Whole. Um, what I would like to do is I'd like to make a motion to amend the resolution to strike point two, if you can stay with me there. Uh, honestly, I would, I would want to keep point three, which says that we shall not use stereotypes or existing race of ethnic, ethnic groups, but I feel we're not going to be there. So let's strike two. Let's strike point three. This is part of my motion on one. Um, number four, which says the school may use the warrior name. Let's continue that. Um, and let's uh, strike, um, let's strike five. And um, Mr. Walker, I apologize for this. I would like to keep point. Um, I'd like to keep point one, which says the East Middle School mascot, as with all mascots, should instill a positive school spirit among students, parents, staff, and residents, providing a symbol of pride for all of our members in our community, a way that is culturally and racially sensitive and appropriate. I think that should stay because I don't think there's any controversial anything controversial than that. Let's strike point two. Uh, that says to retire the Native American imagery. Let's strike point three, as painful as it is to me, to say let's strike that we cannot use existing race or ethnic groups for mascots. Um, let's keep point four. It says the warrior name may continue. Let's strike um, point five that is charging the school to involve the students on a new mascot. Let's strike point six. So let's just keep one and seven, which is uh, seven is that we direct the administration to engage in public discussions regarding the appropriateness of mascots and building names with expectation. Um, so let's keep those two. Um, that is that is point one and point seven. That is my motion, and I encourage uh, any members that find this. If you want to continue to have these discussions and don't want to put it on the back burner, and you want to do this now. Uh, and to give the administration a fair and substantive amount of time, this is a year and a half, that I, I encourage you to please second and support this. A second. Any discussion? Madam President, I have to give Mr. Brenneman credit for wanting to be flexible and for listening and want to make adjustments, and he did do that since a week ago at this meeting, but I still think it's, I don't support putting committing district energy to do what must be done to invite all the input. I just don't see it as worth the effort at this in this situation. But I do give him credit for trying to uh, be reasonable about adjusting what he's trying to do. Madam President, if I may ask Mr. Brenneman a question regarding his um, amendment to the resolution, yeah. there are. Um, two pages prior to there are two pages of whereas or recitals for the resolution which um, detail um, your research relative to the claim that the, the mascot has racist undertones and such which would seem to contradict with the intent of your um, amendment by removing all the aspects relative to that from the actual action portion of the resolution. So, so, so my question is, yeah. are you looking to strike the first two pages as well and just go with the action portion, or do you want to leave the, the recitals in um, as stated? I, I, I appreciate you bringing that up, and that thought did cross my mind. Um, I do uh, believe that all of that information, which is the research and the word of, of civil rights organizations like the NAACP, like the NCAI, like the Indian American uh, uh, IAM and, and APA and stuff. I think all that information is relevant because it is the words of researchers. It is the words of civil rights leaders and organizations. It is the words of Native American organizations. And so I think that that drives 
the conversation, it talks about how racial depictions is harming uh, the, the community. So uh, I would leave it up to uh, any other member of the board, if they further wish to amend the resolution to strike those two pages. Um, you know what, I, I know, I, honestly, I, as, I really think this is, uh, that we shouldn't, that we should, 2022, we shouldn't be here. But uh, I will further expand my amendment. Um, and of course, I know it, it was already seconded, but you know, procedurally, whatever it is, I'll further amend, uh, uh, amend my uh, amendment to strike those first two pages and just leave it to those resolved, point one and point seven. Madam President, that would be an appropriate time to ask if there was a second to the additional amendment. Is there a second to the additional? I second. Just if, second. If, if I may read the resolution. With, with the consent of the second, could that be just the amendment? What he, as he just. That, that is the, the full amendment, the, the, uh, with the consent of the second, which was just given, <coughs> excuse me, the resolution as it exists now is be it hereby resolved by the Board of School Directors of the School District of the City of Erie that the East Middle School mascot, as with all mascots, should instill a positive school spirit among students, parents, staff, and residents, providing a symbol of pride for all members of our community in a way that is culturally and racially sensitive and appropriate. And <coughs> excuse me, the Board of Directors further directs, the Board of Directors directs the administration to engage in a series of public discussions regarding the appropriateness of mascots and building names with the expectation that the administration report at the September 2023 Committee of the Whole. That is the entirety of the resolution as amended. Is that correct, Mr. Brenneman? It is. Thank you. Okay, I have a question. So why do we even need to do a resolution for that? So is that question asking, to me? Or? Oh, no, I'm asking oh. Ms., uh, Tim. Do we, do we need a resolution for the, a committee to be formed? <coughs> to have is, this, this, well, the, the I, I guess, uh, let me... Are we in a discussion mode right now? So I guess my thing is I am scaling back to I'm pretty much at bare bones, okay, that if we're going to address any of it, it needs to all be together, school names, everything, and it all starts with committee and communities and schools. That's where I'm at. So I guess I'm wondering why we need to put a resolution in for this, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, Madam President, it appears to be Mr. Brenneman's intent, if I may speak for you, sir. Tell me where I go off the rails. Tell me where I go off the rails. It, I, it, I'm just gonna use that term. <laughs> with this resolution, it um, appears to be his intent to direct the administration to engage in those conversations, to in, in, encourage them to, not encourage, to direct them to occur, and to report back in September 2023, Committee of the Whole. That, that is the effect of the resolution. So with your question of do we need the resolution, that is a decision for the board to make on, on the policy of whether you want to just encourage the uh, administration and the community to hold those conversations or whether you want to hold them to the timeline that is expressed in the resolution. And, and since you know, that question is, again, what it comes down to is that until we are actually have something on paper and that we are uh, resolving as a board to address something that we all, I think, is seemingly unanimously agree that there should be a review of uh, ma not just mascots individually, but mascots and uh, building names, et cetera, this is the opportunity. This is where the proof is in the pudding, where we're saying that we're going to commit to those words. Um, because if we just say that we're going to do something, there's really nothing there to really hold us to the, you know, there's nothing. This, this shows to the community, just like when the board um, has passed previous resolutions, this just shows to the community that we are going to have these, com these, um, these uh, conversations and that it's over a very expansive amount of time. Um, and I, I think that if we all truly want to stand by our word that uh, we want to have these conversations, uh, on this, that um, by placing this resolution, I think 
uh, is, is well-fitting and well-established in tradition of this body uh, to, to make such a resolution. So I would, uh, that's, again, going back to, um, back to that. Let's, let's tell the community, let's direct the administration, we'll support them. Uh, let's have these conversations and let's put it in that resolution. Madam President? Yes. I actually think as well that the, the first action step there is important. I think the statement about what we believe mascots and school names and facility names should be, I, I think that's an important thing to state. Um, from the beginning, I've been uncomfortable singling out East. I think that was raised tonight as well. I think for us to start getting into issues of which is more offensive to whom is very dangerous. Um, I agree that this administration is very busy. I know we have very many things on our plate. And I wish that this wasn't necessary, but I believe it is. And I believe that it is a, in good faith for us to have a resolution on the books to state that we believe that this should be um, a community conversation and that we give the administration sufficient time. I appreciate Mr. Brenneman being flexible. He certainly has been. So as it stands right now, I, I do believe it should be a resolution. Um, and it is definitely something that I can support it in, in its current form. Um, so in, in, in that being a resolution, um, in, in the statements of the administration being the forewarner, so I do wanna make sure that the administration are not the only ones present at whatever these community meetings. So uh, that is imperative that if we are going to add something else, considering uh, what's happening in our schools, considering what's going on with our students, considering have we been inside of our schools? Have we sat and talked to any of our students? 13,000 of them, so we got a whole lot of work that we could still do. And I'm not opposed to this, I just wanna make sure that we don't take something, drop it in the admin's lap, and then as a board, we're not present or willing to kinda of still take, take those front seats and, and have those conversations. Um, so I do want to make sure that we do not um, try to scapegoat on this because the community has something to say. The students at East have something to say, and that is imperative that we don't just take it and say, well, you, you guys gotta do it. And so I wanna, I don't know what that looks like, but on, on my stance, I will not be saying yes if that is not something that will be made sure to happen. Madam President. Yes. And I'd like to ask Mr. Brenneman, could we just table your resolution and go back as a group and talk because it's obvious that we're sitting here and we all have concerns about it. We're changing things so our minds are not computing it. So I think it's something that maybe you'd like to, I would suggest to you that we table this, go back when we have our retreat, talk about it, come up with a resolution and then bring it forward. I'll second that. Rose, are you making a motion to move that? Would yes. You just vote? Could I make a motion to table this for further discussion? I'll Seconded second by Do we, Sumner. Just a question, a point of, a point of discussion. Um, so there's a motion on the floor right now? There's a, there are Does two, this supersede that? Yes, there are two okay. motions on the floor. Um, there, there's a motion to adopt the resolution as attached to the agenda. Mm -hmm. And then there is a motion to amend the resolution as discussed. According to rule three, uh, B341, when there's a motion before the board, no other motion shall be uh, entertained except to adjourn, recess, or lay on the table, or to close debate, to refer, postpone, indefinitely to postpone or amend. And the motion shall take precedence in the order, order above named. So in this case, um, motion to table would be appropriate and that would take precedence over and above the motion to amend the resolution as it exists. In other words, no discussion on table, we vote right now, roll there, call. There is table. no debate on, there's no debate on table. It table is a, or not? It's That's either no. table or not, it's a roll call vote. All right, well it was seconded by Mr. Nichols and we will do a roll call. Ms. Cooley? Ms. Abel? Yes. Yes. Ms. Devlin? No. Ms. Gillespie? No. Mr. Harkins? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Sheridan? Yes. Dr. Tate? 
No. Mr. Brenneman? No. Ms. Pickens? Yes. The motion to table prevails, five votes to four. Now we deal with the amendment. Um, I believe that the entirety of the item has been tabled. Everything is. I think when amendments offered, we have to act on the amendment and approve it. And if, we, if it's approved, then we vote on the main motion as amended. But I'll defer to the few. I believe in the, in this case, Mr. Harkins, we had a we had a motion to approve a motion and a second for an agenda item, as written. There was a motion second to table it, and no vote. Or excuse me, to amend it, and no vote was taken. The motion to table was to table the entirety of the agenda item. So I believe that the entirety of the agenda item has now been tabled. Not was that your intent, Ms. Sheridan, for the motion yeah. to table the entirety of the yeah. agenda item and right. not just the amendment? The table right. failed. I'm just saying now we have to deal with the amendment before the, the main the motion. Table, pre huh? The okay. table prevailed. I'm just offering my two cents. I, I have said what I think it should be, but. Yeah, I believe the item's been tabled. Uh, just a, a question. Um, once I've commit my vote, can I change? I mean, is this is my vote uh, to table it? Um, um, can I change that right now as we're in, or? Um, I don't believe that we have the ability to change the vote. Okay, it's been just a just a quick ask. Thank you. What was the question? I just asked if I could change my vote on the table motion, that's all. You want to table it? Yes. Well, he can reconsider his vote to table. He voted in the majority to accomplish the table, and therefore at this meeting or a subsequent meeting, he can reconsider that. He did not vote in the majority. He did. He voted not to table it, so that was the majority. There were five votes. Not no, no, sir, you, you have it backwards. I feel like I'm not helpful. Also. <laughs> that's okay. It's it's been tabled. I understand. I just uh, that's fine. Okay, moving on to item 8.4, um, administration transfer. Can I have a motion to approve? So moved. So moved by Devlin. Second. Second. Second by Tate. Discussion. I don't know what this is or consists of. Could we just hear from the administration a name or a thing or a position? Not, not a president. No. Like me. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. This this is the motion to approve the, the transfer mm -hmm. for uh, Mr. Parker as the supervisor of school and community safety. I, I didn't hear that. Motion to approve the Mr. Parker to serve as the supervisor of school oh, and community oh, oh, safety. Oh, oh, sure. Okay. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a personnel issue, so we can't discuss it. Am I correct? <coughs> Items of personnel are generally Items of executive session relative mm -hmm. to the individual qualifications of uh, of a person. Um, if if you don't feel as if somebody, if you have opinions uh, regarding why you're going to vote no on this subject, you would have the ability to speak those. Okay. But generally, items of personnel we do keep in um, executive session. Okay. But you can if you'd like. Okay. Thank you. I will. Um, I'm I'm sure Mr. Parker is a wonderful human being. A great administrator uh, he's going for a job where he has half the qualifications and and he doesn't have the other half and the other half is the policing and in this time and what's going around in the city with our juveniles and we're asking him to lead a police force when he has minimal experience it's like putting an uncertified teacher in a classroom and telling him to teach. I, I just can't go for it, I'm sorry. Thank you, any other discussion? A roll call. Ms. Cooley. Here. 
Ms. Devlin? Yes. Ms. Gillespie? Yes. Mr. Harkins? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Sheridan? No. Dr. Tate? Yes. Mr. Brenneman? Yes. Ms. Pickin? Yes. Moving to item 8.5, uh, resolution regarding the structure and sharing of enrollment data at quarterly regular board meetings. Um, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. I would so move moved that. by Tate. Second? Second. Second by Gillespie discussion. Um, I was the one who requested for this to be separated, for the next three to be separated, mainly because as we've seen earlier, we do not need to create a resolution to ask the superintendent to provide data or information. Um, a lot of this information not only is on the website, but we do have Karen Ryan at majority of all of our community of the whole meetings, and all we have to do is make a request in advance for that information to be shared. Uh, one thing I do not want to happen is us to get on the platform and try to banter or downplay our students or the efforts of our teachers um, during such a hard time within the schools and all of that. So I requested that this not be a um, resolution because it is all a matter of request and planning. Um, so that was, that was just my stance on it. I'd Any like further discussion? Go ahead. I propose this because it's a very important part of our funding and our success as a district is our enrollment. And we receive very detailed reports every month that show how many children are in cyber schools and in brick and mortar charters, as well as our schools, as well as the parochial and private schools that are in the city. So this is very good marketing information. But we receive it in the form of a report that just shows a point in time as at the end of the month. I think this should be graphed on a five-year basis so we can look at trends for our individual schools plus the district as a whole and that we should focus on this on a quarterly basis at these meetings. I've been on the board for two years. We certainly talk about enrollment from time to time, but we don't get into the weeds on it. I think this is very important information. I think it should, it would improve our communications with uh, our public here, and we can talk about enrollment on a quarterly basis, and that's why I propose this. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nichols. Any further discussion? Mr. Madam President, I happen to agree with your point of view that we don't need to let this rise to the level of a, re a board resolution. And putting such a resolution there requires the superintendent to do it, and a subsequent superintendent and a subsequent board either has to then repeal it or always uh, respect that. I just don't think we need to restrict and begin to make too many specific reports be required when the superintendent will respond uh, to request for information, as I said during his report tonight, either at that point or at a meeting we ask him to when we reasonably agree, like if he can do it in a week, which he often says he does and will and has, or at the next regular meeting when we're together. So this, this can, there's nothing wrong with requesting it, but it can be accomplished and given to us without the force of a resolution is what I believe you said, and I agree with that. Thank you, Mr. Harkins. Any further discussion? Okay, roll call. Ms. Cooley? No. Ms. Devlin? No. Ms. Gillespie? No. Mr. Harkins? No. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Sheridan? Yes. Dr. Tate? No. Mr. Brenneman? No. Ms. Pickin? No. Moving on to item 8.6. Resolution to amend the superintendent's report to include written questions provided by school board directors. Um, can I have a motion to approve? I'll move it. Second. I'll second. Second by Gillespie. Any discussion? I'd like to speak to what I mm -hmm. presented this. I've been on the board for two years and uh, I think these regular meetings should provide more information to uh, the citizens of Erie. Uh, 
every month the superintendent certainly provides information that's, that's valuable and, and makes a report, but I think we should have a mechanism where he considers questions by us. And what I'm proposing is that directors would submit these five days in advance and each month the superintendent would respond to three of these. These would be on the agenda. He'd have advance notice of them. We can all sit here and say, hey, it snowed, we had some problems, and we can talk about that every month, but that's an administration's job. We're supposed to set policy for the district, which means we're gonna be asking questions which we cannot expect Mr. Polito to be able to answer off the cuff. There's nine of us, there's one superintendent, it's an unruly group here as far as trying to accomplish things, and I just thought if we had questions put forward every month that could be put on the agenda and with the superintendent having advance notice and he could specify somebody to respond, we as members of the board and, and the citizens of the Erie would learn more about the district. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nichols. I again requested for that to be separated and I still stand on not feeling as though this needs to be a resolution. Um, we have both been on the board for two years and for two years we spent in the pandemic. So we really didn't get a chance to see what um, the boards, the, the meetings could actually grow to be with. So, cause we haven't given it a chance. We came on in December, March, 2020, we were virtual and then we just came back to in-person. Um, so I do think that we should give it a chance. I will also say that it's not necessarily the board's duty to only create a ton of policies. We are here to help navigate what is already in place for 13,000 students. It is not only to come and constantly create policy when we have policies that haven't been reviewed or anything at this time. So I do want us to keep that in mind, um, just as board members new and old, because yeah, we're all very fresh. Um, working on this together. So I will still stand where I, I stood before that I don't feel that this needs to be a resolution. Um, any further discussion? Madam President. Yes. Um, I support generally um, Director Sumner's uh, work on this and I think that it is something that uh, is would be helpful and I think that we as a board and especially the business of the board discussing uh, the quality of our meetings and the outcomes and uh, the value of the information that's shared um, is, is a critical conversation for us to be having, and I think it's a perfect fit for the, uh, uh, for the retreat, but also I think it's just something that we should discuss uh, uh, in some fashion or form later on because, um, you know, the way things have always been done, you know, sometimes things get stale or just things get missed, you know, just new fresh of eyes on how things are done, uh, maybe getting the input of, uh, the superintendent on what you know he values and what you know what is of interest and and uh, I think even you know engaging students on on and families on what they find because you know people are watching this right now and elsewhere and I think there's a good learning opportunity that we can have and I think that I'm, I appreciate that he has created this and I think it's something we should pursue um, down the road but I think we should we should start with uh, a rigorous you know concerted conversation uh, about it first. Thank you, Mr. Brenneman. Any further discussion? Madam President? Yes. I will say that certainly we're all new, but this meeting tonight already has been different, I think, than many of the meetings in the past. There has been a lot of discussion. Mr. Harkin certainly encouraged us to do that. Um, I don't think the comment about snow removal was trivial. I think it is our job to make sure that families feel heard. Uh, and so I think just the opportunity to ask the superintendent questions tonight was sufficient. I felt my questions were answered. I can report back to the folks who reached out to me just with that mechanism. So I think what we have is sufficient for now. Madam Ms. President. Gillespie? Yes. I will say that um, anytime I've reached out to him through email, the superintendent, he's been receptive to my emails and gotten back to me, so. Got it. Thank you for that. Any further discussion? Um, yes, please. I just, I'm not trying to say that the superintendent has not been receptive, but there's nine of us, and when we communicate with him separately, it's a burden on him, plus it does not get out to the public. That's why I thought by adding this to the agenda where we'd have three questions that he could address every month, 
we do a better job of communicating to our citizens. If you think the way we should do this is just to email the superintendent and get a personal response, I think that's chaos. Thank you. Yeah. I share the opinion that you expressed, Madam President, that we don't need a resolution to accomplish this in the best way. The intent is okay, but just as Daria asked that question on that subject, that's how it should happen with everything else. Any other board member at that point wants to ask in front of the public, Mr. Superintendent, can you report back to us on whatever? And he says, he's, as he's done in front of some of us many times, let me understand what you're asking me. Do you want this or we can give you this or I need some time on this? And then he does it. I mean, that way the public hears the question and it understands that it may take time or it may not as Daria's answer didn't require, the answer to Daria's didn't take time. But the flexibility is there and there's no requirement uh, to come up with three questions what, per board member every week. I just, I just think it's restricting or limiting or it gets in the way of smooth, uh, orderly process of disseminating information. That, I don't want to disagree with Sum Sumner's intent or his right to propose this, but I just don't see that this should be a resolution and the force that goes with a resolution. Thank you, Mr. Harkins. Um, so yeah, Sumner, I mean, I think that we can probably look at going forward, maybe looking at how, what, what are we looking for to happen at committee as a whole when the public is still invited and if there's something that you want specifically addressed, we can have those proper people coming. Um, if it's something regarding transportation, we can have Randy show up and he can speak better to that versus us just saying, oh, superintendent, we want you to, you know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? And so at least we're getting it from the proper channels and we can get all of the substance with that. Um, and so that was just my last thing. Madam President, my, yes. second, my second time. That is available to us now and that's how it ought to go and goes best. And I wanna repeat what I said at the five o'clock meeting. For many years, that meeting consisted of, of us sitting and watching some very important and very informative presentations and we came out here and just voted on some such things and the public never saw those so if you want to make these meetings here more interesting and engaging for the public let's not have those in that in that room in the seclusion of that room or in the limits of that room but have those presentations out here and let them come across to the public, the audience, and wherever it's carried through whatever media. So I agree with you, this doesn't, this ought not be a resolution, and if you wanna bring information to people, do it by having the presentations that he gives us, that the superintendent gives us with the intent to broaden our awareness and update us and all of that, do it here instead of that committee of the whole meeting, and then everybody's more informed, including us. Any further discussion? Roll call. Ms. Cooley? No. Ms. Devlin? No. Ms. Gillespie? No. Mr. Harkins? No. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Sheridan? Yes. Dr. Tate? No. Mr. Brenneman? No. Ms. Pickens? No. I'm sorry, are we on 8.7? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I got lost in the numbers. Okay, we're on uh, 8.7, resolution to amend superintendent's report to include a report given by athletic director. Um, can I have a motion to approve? I move the resolution. I second it. Second, moved by Nichols, seconded by Sheridan. A discussion. Madam President. Yes, ma'am. This goes along with the other if we want a report, we should just contact the, uh, we should ask for the athletic director to come and give us a report. I don't feel we need to have a resolution to ask for the report. If we ask these teachers for a report or a director for their report, they give us their report. I don't think we need to have a resolution. Just invite them to come to the meeting with a report. Thank you, Ms. Cooley. I'd like to speak to it. Mr. Yeah. Nichols been on the board two years and we've not met with the athletic director. There have been very pressing issues. I'm not blaming the administration for that. There's nine of us on the board. I think we should be paying more attention to our athletic efforts. When the schools were combined, 
that was supposed to improve our competitiveness, and it has, but like everything else, it needs some improvement. I thought if we could have the athletic director become part of the regular agenda and report every month or send basketball coaches or football coaches or whatever, we would focus on that for the year and we might accomplish something. Uh, that's why I put this forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nichols. I think a good place for us to start as a board is to also show up at games. Um, for instance, the one that they emailed out about the Erie High girls game. I went to an Erie High boys game and there was not many of us th there, you know. Um, I think that the other team, I feel, well, the cheerleaders pretty much were the majority at the game. They, they have a huge cheerleading team. So that's a, a good place for us to start, but we can definitely look forward to athletic directors and reports and all of that. And I will say we should probably give our new athletic director some time um, to just get acclimated with all the things. Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. I appreciate Sumner's interest in athletics. It's been neglected for many, many years and it's taken a back seat and it's been gutted by budget problems. And as Lori just said, we have a new athletic director and she's got to be swamped with learning and doing it. Uh, and there's no harm in having her come and letting us know very soon what she's working on or what she identifies as her focus and for us to question her. But again, all that can be done and should be done without a resolution. Just ask Brian to do it and he can direct her to do it. But we, we should understand that she's not going to be a fountain of information being as new as she is, so she should be allowed to, to acclimate herself and function, but she, she could certainly come and give us a brief uh, update on where she's headed and what, what she recognizes as needs and strengths and weaknesses, et cetera. So again, I just, I'm, I like and we need and want the interest in athletics, but I just don't think we need a resolution requiring that administrator to be here every month to accomplish that. Any further discussion? Okay. Madam President, I'd like to say one thing. I think it would be uh, really important when we have the committee of the whole meetings um, that we see some of these people. I've yet to meet the athletic director. Um, I know that there are a few people, personnels in that meeting, special eds in that meeting, but I think it would be really nice to see more of our administrators in that meeting. So if we do have a question, we can go right up to them and ask them, or Brian, you know, we can ask Brian to ask them to speak. So they should be more available there. That would be a good place to have them. Thank you. Can I speak twice? Can you speak twice? Oh. I can just say, I don't, I don't know. Did John speak twice? I don't think I spoke twice on this. I just want to say I agree with Rose's intent, but that can be accomplished by calling Brian on the phone an hour before, well, a day, a day or two before the committee of the hall and just saying, can we have so-and-so, this or that administrator, come to the meeting and explain a few things to us and let him, let him handle that? So again, I just don't think you need a resolution to have that, but the request, the intent of having those people and they have, there's been a lot of changes and we don't know all of them personally or we're not familiar with all of them, that would be a good thing. But again, I don't think we need a resolution to do that. Um, Brian's never refused. Any further, Gwenda? I'm ready for um, vote. Yeah, so, okay, I, I agree. I appreciate what, what um, Rose said. I think that we should think about going forward as creating some kind of focus maybe, f and I'm not sure if we can do this, but a focus for a committee of the whole, right? So I'm more apt to come. I'm not coming to a committee of the whole when you're talking about athletics and then you want to go run over here, run over there. But if people will probably be more prone to come if there's some focus and direction with the meeting. Um, so maybe looking way down the line, if we do want to start talking about sports, maybe we can say we're going to have all of them, well, not all of our coaches, but you know, a large portion or the athletic director and some of the students and the student athletes come and share their perspective. You know, and those we can start driving in some very good focuses and then people can pick and choose more so if that information is something I want to come here, you know, and if we want to talk about all the data, we can start driving that in. So I think that we should look at creating something like that for Committee of the Whole's 
going forward. It's a new look. It's a, it's a, it could be a definitely a different brand for us, but I think just having a whole bunch of random saying, oh, I want to have them there, 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 them there, it, it just kind of jumbles. So what happens is people come and then they leave when that part is, is done. You know what I mean? So um, that's just a thought. Um, Battle Friends, I do have a hand this time. Yes. And I just want to suggest to every board member, because um, I do know administration do go to, um, but every board member that's sitting here, we get a pass. Use your pass. Yeah. Go to these games and support these young people. We can sit here all night long and say this, that, and the other, but support the young people. You have a pass then you can better also see what's going on with the athletics. So you can ask questions when the time comes. Well, I was at the game and I noticed X, Y, and Z. Her giving a report is not gonna help us see X, Y, and Z. Go to the games. That way you can better ask the questions when the time comes. Madam President. Yes. I, since we're talking about it, I do want to thank Mr. Nichols for bringing this up because I do think it's incredibly important and I think as a board it's wonderful if we have time to focus on it. I agree that I didn't know we had passes, so if that's true, I would mm. get mine. That'd be great. Um, but I was asked last year to announce the, the girls at senior night for the soccer team. It was a great experience for me. I was, I was running for office. I don't know if that's why they asked me. But I think just as a strong woman to be there, I, I called the girls' names. I read their biographies. Um, I felt so connected to them. I learned about them. And so I hope more coaches will ask us to do that. I know, I think Dr. Tate and I are doing it for, for girls basketball. Um, I think that's a great way for us all to be involved, even on the senior night. So I just want to throw that out. If you're asked or if coaches are watching, please ask us. I think many of us would like to do that more often. Thank you, Ms. Devlin. Any further discussion? Roll call. Ms. Coley? No. Ms. Devlin? No. Ms. Gillespie? No. Mr. Harkins? No. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Sheridan? No. Dr. Tate? No. Mr. Brenneman? No. Ms. Pickens? No. Moving on to item nine, approval of minutes. Move to approve the meeting minutes. Second. Uh, second. Who is that second? Cooley? Yes. Moved by Brenneman. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Moving to item 10, bills and payroll. And remotion. Will we approve them for payment? Second. Approved by Harkin, seconded by Brenneman. Any discussion? Madam President? Yes. I'll be abstaining from the vote today um, on bills and payroll because a member of my family works for one of the organizations that will be paid by the district. Yes. Madam President, I'll be abstaining as well. Okay, got it. Because no abstention? I, because I work for Montessori Regional Charter. No abstention for Gillespie and for Devlin. Uh, roll call. Ms. Coley? Yes. Ms. Devlin? Abstain. Ms. Gillespie? Abstain. Mr. Harkins? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Sheridan? Yes. Dr. Tate? Yes. Mr. Brenneman? Yes. Ms. Pickens? Yes. Item 11, report of secretary. Can I have a motion to approve? Okay. Motion accept to accept. Uh, Second. One, one moment, please, Madam President. Okay. Thank you. Uh, moved by Harkins, seconded by Cooley. Thank you. A roll call. Ms. Cooley? Yes. Ms. Devlin? Yes. Ms. Gillespie? Yes. Mr. Harkins? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Sheridan? Yes. Dr. Tate? Yes. Mr. Brenneman? Yes. Ms. Pickens? Yes. Now on to item 12, um, award on bids. Move we make these awards. Second. Seconded by Devlin, moved by Harkins. Um, any discussion? I, uh, thinking back to the Committee of the Whole meeting, just does this include the glass or no glass in the stairwells at Academy? Does what we're going to vote on here? 
So the resolution in front of you does not include glass, but if I remember correctly at the Committee of the Whole, the board authorized us to work with the architects and the general contractor that will be awarded tonight um, to develop a uh, process where we have uh, as much glass as possible for the dollar figure, which was roughly half, which is about $380,000. Well, my question was if, it's, if that's to be decided here, I, I just wanted to make another pitch to have that included. And I don't want to interfere with a motion we're dealing with, but if you're saying, could you, could you ask him, and unless, unless a majority of the board disagrees, could you ask him if he'd also include all glass at those at those uh, stairwells so at a later so you mean bring back to the board at a later date all glass as another option as an option yeah. okay so th that is something that i can definitely bring back uh obviously it would have to be done through a change order but what we what i intended on doing is after the award is been completed is sitting down with the architects and the general contractor and coming up with several different options for uh, what could possibly be at Collegiate for the stairwell glass. Well, I'm asking because that night you made us aware that there was a pool of money that is sitting there for us to decide uh, to prioritize in construction projects. And that night there was some soft uh, support to exclude this from that. And I just sense that there might be some minds have been rethinking that. So if it could just remain an option for the time being, I'd be satisfied. It, it, it can remain an option. I, like I said, I will, I will try to get as many different configurations as possible. What I'm actually thinking of, the easiest way to do it is to approach it as what would the cost be for one stairwell, the main two ones for all glass, and then the other ones in the building getting costs for all glass for those so that the board does have options if they wanted to go down that route. Um, again, uh, the, I believe the architects and the general contractor is going to be willing to work with us on this. They know what the intent is. I've, I've had conversations with um, the company that will be awarded tonight on just what this general idea is going to be moving forward. One of the options we talked about, you didn't have a fixed number for a hard number for. So I'm just satisfied if we get all the numbers for what each look is. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Ms. Cooley? Yes. Ms. Devlin? Yes. Ms. Gillespie? Yes. Mr. Harkin? Yes. Mr. Nichols? Yes. Ms. Sheridan? Yes. Dr. Tate? Yes. Mr. Brenneman? Yes. Ms. Pickens? Yes. Um, any other board matters for discussion? I just want to say I hope Sumner doesn't feel I was too rough on him. I support and, and like all of what he wants to do. I just think it's better accomplished without the force of a resolution. So I don't want him to get discouraged. I mean, we have on several items tonight worked with each other and shown flexibility, and that's what we should do. And we've shown respect for each other. And it takes work to continue that. And it's what it's all about. So I'm just. As we learn to work together, it's a good thing, and we all have to be bringing our best to it. Any further discussion from the board? Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Nichols. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you for